Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer video. Today we're going to continue our missing character series, once again focusing on the Beastmen where we'll discuss their lore, their rules on the tabletop and how they would possibly translate to Total War Warhammer. Yesterday we covered Gorfor the Beast Lord, which perhaps wasn't the best choice, as I saw a lot of comments in reference to Moonclaw, so today he will be our topic. To better introduce this character to those not aware of him, I will read over his entry into the Warhammer Fantasy Battles 7th Edition Beastmen Army Book. So without further ado, let's begin. Moonclaw, son of Morslieb, the Lunatic Prince, child of the Gravid Orb. The creature known as Moonclaw was not born of mortal creatures, but instead hurled from the pale belly of Morsleeb when it was at its most bloated. Though at first glance he could be mistaken for a particularly hideous beastman, Moonclaw is not of this world, for Moonclaw is utterly and irrevocably insane his actions as random as they are lethal. Upon the Geheimishnat, apologies for the butchering, when Moonclaw came onto the world, Morsleep hung low and full in the firmament like the belly of a pregnant hag. The forests resounded to the orgiastic feasting of the beastmen tribes. At the stroke of the witching hour, a blazing horned comet seared across the skies. It briefly traced a green scar across the heavens, before hammering through the clouds and slamming into the sacred grove at the base of the barren hills. A wave of green-black force flattened the forest for miles around. Nothing survived the disastrous impact save for Moonclaw himself, who stepped steaming from the cracked remains of an egg-shaped lump of purest warpstone, his glistening fur slicked to his body by nameless fluids. Thus did Moonclaw step from the weirdling substance of his lunar mother into the old world. Since that day, Moonclaw has wandered the lands in a daze, speaking glottal syllables in a backwards tongue. His glowing, goat-slit eyes seem to see into another realm, and his erratic gestures leave doubleganger traces in the air. Wherever the beastmen witness the lambent, green-black flames that lick around Moonclaw, they fall to their knees in worship. When Morsleeb is nearest the earth, Moonclaw's power waxes full. It is then that Moonclaw summons the strange two-headed beast Umbralok, that serves as his steed and rides at the head of a great army. On these nights, he seeks out the waystones that dot the old world, edifices older than the race of man. Moonclaw desires nothing so much as to see these flung down and defiled, so that the dark power they stem may flow out into the world. So it is that Moonclaw leads his followers against the civilized races, his twisted and mutated form crackling with barely contained power atop his fiendish steed. Few can tolerate the wave of madness that precedes Moonclaw on these most eldritch of knights, let alone stand resolute when jagged shards of lunar rock hurtle out of the skies to annihilate any who earn Moonclaw's displeasure. As you can see, Moonclaw is a rather interesting character. He's listed as a beastman, but he is by far not a beastman. Instead, he is living personification of chaos. Many would say that he is very similar to Morga the Shadowgave. However, Morga once was mortal, a small human child as far as the lore goes, whereas Moonclaw seems to have been born out of pure chaotic randomness. If Creative Assembly want to go with something truly unique, maybe Moonclaw is the best option, as the circumstances of his birth, and indeed his whole being, is pretty much something you don't see every day in Warhammer. Yes, there are some unique origin stories even in Warhammer Fantasy. Obviously, this character would be on foot, 
but would be able to unlock Umbralock maybe a few turns in, say turn 8 to turn 12 more or less seems fair. In regards to how the character actually works, Moonclaw was a wizard who could generate spells from the Law of the Wild or the Law of the Shadows. The best way to go about this would be either to give the character access to both laws as we've seen with certain characters, or of a healthy mix of both laws. Half and half seems fair enough. I would personally prefer the first option, but you never know with Creative Assembly. In regards to special rules, Moonclaw had three. The first being Wave of Insanity, which every unit, friend or foe within 12 inches of him at the start of their turn must take a stupidity test. I think this could be transformed into something truly unique, a one-off spell that he could use per battle, where everything around an area near him, friend or foe, could go completely insane. Everyone would lose access to their units and they will begin to fight whatever is close, regardless if it's enemy or ally. This could be used extremely well given the circumstances. You could charge Moonclaw into an army and use it, or if you want to cause a lot of chaos, do it in the middle of two armies fighting. The spell itself would only work for around 15 to 20 seconds, but enough to do a decent amount of damage. Next would be Unholy Zenith, which at the beginning of the game, secretly roll a d3 and record the number. In the turn that corresponds to this number, more sleep is 4. For the entire duration of that turn, more sleep has a 2 plus bonus to casting spells. Yeah, that's something that really doesn't need to be implemented. However, the second part goes as follows. To represent his ability to call down a shower of warpstone meteors, he may make a shooting attack in reference to this, which I think could be rather interesting. Say, once again, a special ability that he could use once, twice or maybe three times per game. At the beginning of each battle, after rolling for Reynold's Blessing, you would also make a separate roll. With this, you'd be able to see if you would have one, two or three meteors. These wouldn't be as powerful as, say, Claw's nukes, but would do substantial damage, and the random aspect of it would always have the player questioning as to how powerful he'll be in a given battle. It's an element which maybe should be explored more. And lastly, the Ward of Morsleeb, which gives him an increased ward save and increased magical resistance. Those translate easy enough into Total War Warhammer. In regards to a possible plot for his implementation, it's already explained in the lore that we've covered that he's searching around for the magical waystones, hoping to break them open and let chaotic energies rise. I think it's pretty easy enough for Creative Assembly to expand upon that. Say for example, if it's a Beastmen vs Dark Elf DLC, then Moonclaw would be tasked to destroy as many of these waystones as possible, whereas the Dark Elf would probably want to gain access to the Waystones themselves. And yes, I know that Waystones have made a rather important feature in regards to the Twisted and the Twilight, but these of course would be different Waystones. As we are aware, there are many littered across the Warhammer Fantasy world. I think that's simple enough in regards to the character, if I can be completely honest. I mean, it's kind of like everything is already written in his army book, so not much really needs to be expanded upon. However, Creative Assembly or yourselves might think otherwise, so how would you see this character being implemented into a future DLC? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and let's start a bit of a discussion. As I said earlier in this video, many of you did comment about Moonclaw when I spoke about Gorefall, so I'm rather interested to see your thoughts regarding this character. But with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like or even subscribing to the channel as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games where you could buy loads of hobby-based products, not just Warhammer, for 10-25% to off. Making a purchase using that link and also our special code, which is also in the description, supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool.
A big thank you to our patrons. Your support means the world to us. It's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to a higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince, and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level. You guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman, and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level. Honestly, we can't thank you all enough. And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel's been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very very soon. Have a good day.